Hey, it's Pabo, back with another video. I just got a message from one of the guys in our alliance about what rituals are important uh, for our current Zangor infantry build going into um, for Keep 21 before going into Keep 22. So I'm just going to briefly run through it. It's pretty quick. Um, infantry, military rituals, you're going to want to go all the way down the tree, uh, pick up demonic weapons, chaotic armor, uh, max those out. You will be capped by uh, your keep level. Uh, feel no pain and harden resolve. The reason why I'd say pick these up pretty early is they just give really strong flat buffs to everything. 1% to everything. Um, these ones are 5% to everything. Um, feel no pain and harden resolve are two of the best things and they're relatively compared to the expenses on other things very cheap good bang for your buck um, generally the lower things on the same tree are going to kind of provide that for you um, you really don't need gorbis um, i've talked about this some the only thing you will need gorbis for in the future is gorbis um, mutilated vortex beast and chimera not for the actual troops, but in order to unlock this um, undivided troop bonus. But again, much more of a late game uh, ritual for those undivided builds. Um, very costly for speed ups too. Like each of these upgrades, you know, <laughs> 60, 50, 60 days. Um, not really worth it unless if you've capped literally everything else. Um, I personally maxed a lot of these. Um, Bane of, but they aren't required. I would say uh, you can ignore champion attack. You can ignore champion endurance more or less. You'll get more endurance from, you know, your keep skin um, right here, your keep skin, as well as your full battery suit. If you can get this, um, don't follow my battery suit exactly. The helmsman sword is better. And instead of getting the vanquisher um vanquisher sword you should be getting the helmsman uh club oh uh, sorry you should be getting the um vanquisher gloves and the headsman uh sword the the headsman sword gives a fair amount of vanquish damage as well so you can still use it while hitting foes before unlocking your flail but your flail won't be unlocked until much higher keep levels um, and the Vanquisher chain damage, although it, it doesn't keep up with the Vanquisher van braces, transmuting van braces in the early game, um, it's nice to have at least a common version of it so that as you do get into that late, late game, you will have the first component of it. Um, hmm. uh, whenever you're doing anything, first of all, uh, you're, you're pushing it all. Always try to find a way to max the Merciless Slave Lord. And the arcane knowledge for your keep level that will um, be based largely around your blast furnace. So whenever you go up a keep level, um, one of your first upgrades should should always be your blast furnace because that will unlock you know your ability to upgrade this. Um, you can't max out um, merciless slave lord and arcane knowledge until you hit keep twenty twenty six. So when you hit twenty six, you'll be able to get the twenty six. Um, blast furnace and you'll be able to then get the 26 sorcerer citadel and with the 26 sorcerer citadel you'll be able to get both merciless slave lord slave lord and arcane knowledge um in terms of uh these yeah if you haven't already max alliance help that is the primary skill um one of the the core um that you will need march slots uh you you always kind of want to be picking up your march slots. Those are also essentials. Um, you, if you haven't already, um, overburden's quite nice if you could see yourself farming a lot. But again, if you're kind of in that early um, army heavy hitting, uh, sorry, overburden's not that great. Um, overburden is just kind of a quality of life thing. If you have some extra speed ups, you're just bored. Um, enslaved workers is quite good. It'll give you some gathering speed. But again, if you're kind of primarily 
focused on armies, I would say, and, and running low on speed ups, I would say it's not a necessity. Again, I plan on gathering a lot right now, so uh, just to farm pots and things like that, but don't necessarily need many more of the army components except for my blinding hate suits. Um, demonic rituals, you're going to want to go Zerker's Rage, Armor of Brass, and you want to go all the way down this tree. Um, everything under Pink Horrids, uh, Mark a Zinch, um, and you kind of want to stop here. Uh, you can technically, you know, if you if you spend a lot of speed ups, you can go down this tree and this tree, and go ahead and pick up the demonic healing, uh, which isn't that great, but the demonic resilience is quite good. It will make your uh, CWATs quite uh, two percent tankier, which is just a, a nice solid buff. And as well, you can get the glory of the gods. Um, which will help with armies farming and eye of the gods, which will help with, with champion exp. Um, these aren't necessities; these aren't requirements. Um, but the thing is, is, they take a lot of speed ups to go all the way down this tree, all the way down this tree, and get each one of your secondary, um, you know, temples to a high enough level to use them. So, hmm. What else do we got here? Those are your cores. Um, Keen Blades. This is much like uh, your Battle Rituals and Feel No Pain. Um, they were just huge buffs. 5% buffs across the board for that one. And for your Keen Blades, it's a 15% buff at a higher levels. Wow. Let's see what it is at lower levels. 1%, 2%, 3%. Um, but the Keen Blades is... It's kind of like getting a free, free, free damage um, equivalent to what you would get in your champion skills if you went down here to Keen Blades. They're identical, um, not exactly, but it'll give you massive buffs to all your infantry damage. And um, pretty much on the server, no matter what build you're going, we're all infantry based, so it is it is massive to to pick up Keen Blades, Corrupted Vitality. Um, also a great one to help your Seawats um, stay tankier. Unholy Accuracy, again, Team Blades, Unholy Accuracy are the two most primary of these. Unholy Armor and Corrupted Vitality are quite strong. Um, I've been told that the health bonus is actually better than the armor bonus. One of the reasons why this is still level 4 is because of my keep level jump. Um... And, uh, for instance, I think you can hit, like, 7 or 8 uh, from Keep 21, and you can hit about 4 from Keep 21 as well. But now that I've unlocked it, health is actually a priority over this armor buff. Um, but then again, you get more armor buff than you do health buff, so they might be comparable, I am unsure. Deprived um, Fever, Fervor, um, I have been told multiple times by many uh either smurfs or expert players on the on the main discord to not upgrade this beyond level four um the reason why is it will change your troop orders um just because of the morale bonus as you get into middle and later stages of the game and it kind of messes with troop composition and once you kind of go past four there's no way of going back so i personally don't find a specific urgent need for it so i've kind of left it unleveled but four is the maximum that you want this to hit you do not want to go to level five um again what else do we have here um these are nice fine cover sabotage and uh show no mercy I haven't invested a ton into these because, you know, they're cheap, but do I really want to spend in a day worth of speed ups on, you know, hitting people for broken troops and, and things like that. So they're nice, but they're not necessary um, unless if you're kind of building more of a defensive style, which I personally don't. Um, again, with defenses, I, I would say it's it's not necessary. Um, 
let's see what else we got. Uh, honestly, nothing else in here is that important. You know, this will give you your Warlord a little more damage. If you want to throw like one or two points into it, you can. Not a priority. Um, infantry uh, Barbarity, you want to max this because this will allow you to passively, you know, produce tons of Seawats and Zangors and I guess um, Chaos Orcs too. Um, ogres, Chaos Ogres. Um, yeah, Chaos Ogres. And yeah, it's just it's just a free way to um, reduce the cost of them. You're going to be pumping out a lot of them when, whenever you want to, um, whenever you got a speed train stuff, you aren't paying as much, I guess. So it's nice across the board. Um, March speed, it's kind of a big investment, especially as you get to these higher speed up levels. So I'd say get it up to like six or seven. Um, I think it's pretty reasonable. Um, and March capacity is a must have. Whenever you get March capacity, you should be maxing it as speed ups permit. See, this one's a huge expense. I've been gathering all freaking day, um, even into yesterday, and I still don't have enough resources for this March speed or um, March capacity. I do, but I, I, I'm not going to do March speed. That's a waste of speed ups for me. Um, again, like it's all about priorities with speed ups. Um, I personally have a lot of points in trade trading tithe because when I was on BLDA, I would send a lot of resources and uh, feed them up to the higher ups. But um, I would say a reasonable level to get this to is like five or six and, and trading capacity is purely a quality of life thing. You know, if you don't want to have to spend an hour offloading like millions of resources i would hate to spend send one million at a time of all these resources so quality of life upgrade not a necessity but um we'll just give you less of a headache later um this is actually um just fight with unholy determination such a state their morale is greatly increased um this is a great one for undivided and it's pretty accessible, but uh, again, we haven't switched to Undivided. We'll be switching to Undivided somewhere between Keep 27 and Keep 30. I believe it's more Keep 30 because that's when you can actually um, begin training your Bray Herds. Keep 32. Or, oh, Sorcerer Citadel. Yeah, Keep 32 is like basically when we're going to be pushing past it. But again, like it's going to take maybe a year or two. So just enjoy kind of getting this baseline, all your infantry and then all your zinch. Um, what else do we have? Mastery skills, equipment loadouts. These are all almost quality of life. Um, your choice. I think you can, most people can survive with just two March loadouts. Um, if you're doing war brands, for instance, just have one for a war brand and one for solo marches and then if you're farming have one for farming and a second one for farming <laughs> and just like deal with it but if you want to have three it is quite nice um i have an option for four but i'm not i don't want to spend you know 20 some odd days of speed ups just to get a quality of life upgrade so um this is kind of again just my biases on these um corn rituals I kind of didn't understand these when I first started upgrading them and kind of just ended up maxing them <laughs> for keep 21 because I had nothing else to level up that was really worth leveling up for me. But with corn rituals, the first thing that I will say is you're going to want to get your brutal strength and uh, fire scorch blades if you want to push some kind of corn ritual over pushing these range damages and the reason why is because the only accessible troop that we'll pretty much be having is any gores of corn um if you happen to either a run a war brand or b have some gores that you have from either a purchase pack or holiday or whatever um you'll get more valuable value out of them with these two but they'll never be hitting from melee or from from range so 
Um, again, health of corn, your corns aren't going to be tanked, so you can completely ignore that. Um, Zinch Rituals, again, Arcane Blast, you letting flame, you want to max this um, range side. And then also getting some points in this melee side. Um, your range side will, will boost your Zangors a lot, as well as any Gores that are hitting with uh, Zinch damage. And your Sundering Claw um, and Arcane Blows, although seemingly not as important, um, they're going to boost your Seawatt damage a lot. And um, Seawatts won't do as much damage by unit, but just strength and numbers, you're going to have a, like a third of your march is going to be Seawatts. And they'll do less damage, but having a buff on them will give you a significant damage boost. Um DPU damage per unit. Um, Nurgle. Um, if you want, I would say again the opposite of corn. Uh, the Nurgle gores are going to hit with range as opposed to melee, unless if they get pushed into melee form. So you're going to want to go for the range ones. Um, I I max them out. I think for for level uh, keep twenty one just because again nothing to do. Give me some exp. Give me some power. Um, give me some um, March strength, and I had a decent amount of gores. Um, Slanesh, I almost ignore this. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm honestly not sure if they go more melee or ranged, but I'm pretty sure they have quite strong range damage. Or, sorry, melee damage. So, I could be wrong, but they might be melee form. And what else do we have here? Oh, Undivided Rituals. Um... I did this wrong when I was first doing it, ex expecting uh, Battleborn accuracy to be more important. But um, the majority of your of your undivided troops early early on, which is going to be your Bray Herds, as well as your um, undivided Gores, is going to be melee. So melee for those. Um, uh, you really don't have to worry about the morale or the damage rituals or sorry uh, or the tank rituals because your bray herd shouldn't be taking damage unless if you're doing like absolutely massive solo marches and and your sea watts are getting obliterated and your maybe your gores get some damage but minimal it'll reduce that but you shouldn't be doing that anyways so that that's a good um rundown of some of the basic rituals um uh, and kind of what's a necessity, what's not, and um, what's what's worth upgrading and what's not. Um, one more thing, one thing that is quite nice in this tree, and probably the only thing you should seriously consider upgrading, is your production speed. Production speed's really nice, uh, just to help you, you know, not have to wait super long on them. Uh, you'll learn that your defenses are one of your main staples in gaining power uh, pretty easily. You can set it out, you know, three, four, five days in advance if you have a good idea of when the next uh, gain power is going to be and have it pop on the correct day. Uh, sometimes it's hard to eyeball it, but you kind of get used to it a little more. And uh, these are going to be your, I believe these are T3s um, and Razor Balls, your T4s. If you want to just be getting more power for your gain power events from your defenses, um, just get this and these. Um, kind of pushing any farther, unless if you're getting into these T5 defenses, is um, T5 defenses are going to give a tremendous amount of uh, gain power, whereas uh, Razor Walls will give a significant amount. But I, I believe Razor Walls and Hell... Um, Trem buckets are going to do the same amount, um, give the same amount of points, except, you know, I believe trim buckets also cost more to just kind of produce. So even in my lowest cost build, which is going to be that one, razor walls will cost, you know, 16 million for 15 days and trim buckets will cost. Oh, I guess they're. Oh, they cost 60 million of the most resource. 5 million, 11 million, 8 million. Eh, 
maybe it's a little cheaper um but yeah i mean it, it depends on how you're going to be doing it these t4s and then these are going to be the t5 defenses um, which starts with i think boiling brass yep and uh flame gargoyles are, are quite strong in terms of uh, a defense but like unless you're trying to go for full trap base i'd say you know not a priority and yeah that's all i got for rituals right now have a good day